So welcome, 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 right? So as promised uh, on my Instagram story, I said I would do a short uh, video training on how I've been able to make money from Forex and actually uh, catch thousands of pips uh, from the Forex market and also uh, get an interest at the same time doing that, right? So get a positive swap payment uh, from my broker. Uh, so uh, the concept I will share here, uh, if you are able to uh, just understand the concept and actually implement it, uh, this concept uh, can actually guarantee uh, as a as a starting point that you actually start making money uh, from your from, from your trading, right? Uh, but before I actually dive deeper into it, uh, I need to actually explain to you so you can understand why do I say this with so much confidence uh, that it will get you the results uh, that you want from your trading, right? So we need to understand that uh, everything in the universe is governed by certain laws, right? So same thing applies to trading right to a certain extent so if we if we if we think of the laws that govern uh, the universe it's the law of gravity right so everything that goes up must come down eventually it may not come down today tomorrow this week or next month but eventually it will come down right and of course uh, newton's laws objects that remains in rest or in motion will continue unless acted upon by an external force, right? So th those are all laws, right? You can debate, uh, you can agree, you can disagree, but those are laws, right? It, it does not change. And uh, for every action, there is an equal and opposite reaction. That is a law, right? For every, which 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 essentially goes in conjunction with, with the law of, par of polarity, right? That every positive action, every positive has a negative, right? So there's no one-sided thing. Every positive thing that is happening has a negative side to it. Every negative thing that is happening has a positive side to it. Whether it be in trading, whether it be in your life, uh, that is the law, right? So whether we we like it or not, that is the law, right? So even in the in the great book, uh, the Bible, uh, there is there are certain laws in ton of them, right? Actually, orders because laws are actually just like orders, right? It is what it is. So uh, just to quote one, uh, Joshua one. Uh, verse 8 or Joshua chapter 1 verse 8 where it reads as follows that keep this book of the law always on your lips meditate on it day and night so that you may be careful to do everything written in it right so let me read that again keep this book of the law always on your lips meditate on it day and night so that you may be careful to do everything written in it then you will be prosperous and successful. So that is just one of the laws, right? From the from the from the Bible, right? In the book of Joshua. So everything is governed by laws, right? So when you when it comes to trading, specifically trading fundamentals, we also need we also need to understand that there are certain laws uh, that actually govern how the markets move, how the market markets behave, so on and so forth, right? And like I said, those laws may not take effect immediately, but they will at some point, right? Because that is how that is just how things are, right? That is just how it works, right? So um, I just wanted to put that out there, so so you may understand moving forward that this is not just me making stuff up but it's based on the laws, right? Based on the principles, essentially. So when we come back to trading, now that we have, we have an understanding of the fact that uh, the reason why fundamentals actually work is because they, they are laws that govern the markets, right? And how markets move, right? One of the reasons why market move is because of GDP dynamics, right? Growth factors, right? economic growth factors. That is one of the reasons why markets move, right? But there's also more laws to it, right? And and one of the most important one, or which I feel is the most basic and the most important that can actually take you uh, across the line of not making money from trading to actually starting to make money from trading, uh, it, it, it's with regards to central banks, right? Uh, so when we talk about central banks, uh, in my in my opinion, they one of the the most important uh, people, or, 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 or yeah, one of the most important uh, components. Let's put it. Uh, let's give it a, a a better word. Components of trading, right? Uh, specifically, 
the foreign exchange markets, right? Uh, even though they do affect the actual markets, right? But uh, more specifically on the foreign exchange market side of things, right? So when it comes to uh, central banks, uh, for us to understand the law, we need to understand who are central banks and what they essentially do, right? So if we look at central banks, uh, I'll just look at, uh, this is on uh, IMF uh, or International Monetary Fund, uh, just let's just read on central banks here. So monetary policy and central banks. So central bank plays a crucial role in ensuring economic and financial stability. That first sentence on its own, ensuring economic and financial stability. That is GDP. That is growth, right? Financial stability means what? Means proper growth or stable growth. So that is their first mandate or their first obligation that they need to ensure economic or financial stability they conduct monetary policy to achieve low and stable inflation that is the second thing low and stable inflation right so what are we having right now high inflation so what does that mean they need to step in and do what they are mandated or obligated to do by law so they can perform their duties as a central bank so and then it continues to read, in the wake of the global financial crisis, central banks have expanded their toolkits to deal with risks to financial stability, GDP, and to manage volatile uh, exchange rates. In response to COVID-19 pandemic, central banks used an array of conventional and unconventional tools to ease monetary policy, support liquidity in key financial markets, and maintain the flow of credit. Central banks need clear policy frameworks to achieve their objectives, right? So they need principles, clear principles, clear laws, operational process, processes ta tailored to each country's circumstance, enhance the effectiveness of the central bank of the central bank's policies. The IMF supports countries around the world by providing policy advice and blah 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 and technical assistance, right? So let's just uh, uh, let's just read these few paragraphs as well and then we move on right so a key role uh, of central banks is to conduct monetary policy to achieve price stability low and stable inflation as well as gdp stable growth and to help manage economic fluctuations so that is the role of the central bank so now i hope you can see the importance of where central banks actually fit in into this whole puzzle of trading right especially trading forex right so you need to understand what they are doing what they are thinking and what they are planning on doing why because they are mandated uh to do what to conduct monetary policy to achieve price stability and low stable inflation so at some point today tomorrow or next week or next month at some point central banks will step in if there is no or if 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 if, if they view that there is no longer price stability which is low and stable inflation or, uh, or stable growth of the economy. So at some point, they will step in. It may They may not step in immediately, but at some point, they will step in. So that is why it is important for us to do it, to focus on central banks. So that is the first key, the first component or the first principle or the first law uh, when it comes to actually trading fundamentals is that we need to focus on central banks and what they are doing, right? And what essentially they are thinking of, right? So since the, since the late 1980s, inflation targeting has emerged as the leading framework for monetary policy. So inflation targeting, today we are dealing with what? High inflation. Central banks in Canada, the Euro area, the, U the UK, New Zealand, and elsewhere have introduced an explicit inflation target. Many low-income countries are also making a transition from targeting a monetary aggregate, uh, a measure of the volume of money in circulation, to an inflation targeting framework. More recently, amidst growing uh, concern about eroding policy space in a context of lower equilibrium interest rates and falling inflation expectations, major central banks have been reviewing their monetary policy frameworks, right? Central banks conduct monetary policy by adjusting the supply of money, generally through open market operations. For instance, this is very important. A central bank may reduce the amount of money by selling government bonds under a sale which is also known as just doing what as quantitative tightening or reducing their balance sheet and repurchase agreement thereby taking in money 
from commercial banks. The purpose of such open market operations is to steer short-term interest rates, which in turn influence longer term rates and overall economic activities. I need you, let me just read that again. The purpose of such open market operations is to steer short-term interest rates, which in turn influence longer term rates and overall economic activity. I, I, I hope you're seeing the importance of central banks at this point. So in many countries, especially low income countries, the monetary transmission mechanism is not as effective as it is in advanced economies. Before moving from monetary to inflation targeting, countries should develop a, frame, a framework to enable the central banks to target short term interest rates. So I'll just end it there. Uh, it goes on about following the, the global financial crisis, but I just wanted to give you guys a context of why I say that understanding the principles of operation for central banks will guarantee that you start making money from Forex. I'm not going to lie to you. Uh, I'm like I said, I'm, I, I don't, I'm not making this up, which is why I'm using reference a reference to read from reputable sources so that you guys can know that I'm not just making this up, right? So this is what I've been focusing on. Uh, of course, there's even there's more, but this has been the backbone, right, of, 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 of my profitable trades, my good trades, uh, those big moving trades or, or, or where, I'm, where I've been able to catch big moves, right, in the Forex market, right? So... For this, for the purpose of this short, uh, short, um, short um, educational piece, I just, I'll just focus on what I'll just focus on central banks, and and I say educational piece because it is in no way financial advice, but it's just to show you what works and what really works for me, and the reason why, right? Because it's it's it it, it it's pointless for me to just show you what works. I need to give you the reasons why, right? The laws that govern. Because everything operates based on laws, right? Or principles, right? Just like the universe, as I had explained earlier, right? So once now we have an understanding of central banks, right? And their duty, we now need to understand that how we actually trade them is, th is through uh, divergence, right? Divergence essentially means uh, moving in opposite directions, but from a common point, right? So central banks all move from a common point, right? They are what? They need to conduct monetary policy um, to do what? To achieve price stability, which, uh, which is low, 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 low and stable inflation, as well as moderate growth or stable growth, right? And, help, and to help manage economic fluctuations. That is the what? That is the starting point right or the common point of what central banks need to do their mandate their job right uh, or what they are obligated to do and then divergence is if they're moving in opposite direction one is hiking interest rates or one is cutting interest rates depending on on what the case is whether they need to adjust the supply of money uh by by decreasing the supply of money where in that case they'll be selling government bonds uh, right or quantitative tightening or e also increasing interest rates and where if they need to increase the supply of money then at that point they'll be purchasing government bonds uh, therefore giving money to commercial banks instead of taking money from commercial banks right so if you just if you if you if if, 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 you, if that still does not make much sense just read this portion again right that should that should put everything into clearer perspective between the relationship between central banks and commercial banks so now with this understanding let us actually go into what let us actually go back to my spreadsheet here so we're actually gonna go to uh the economies just to look at the different central banks so we'll look at the most obvious one of course uh, we do have a lot but for the purpose of this video because i just want to keep it short and i just wanted to highlight the most important thing that will get you a step ahead uh, from the rest uh, let us just read uh, the bank of japan here so let us just try and zoom in a bit and then we can read uh, the bank of japan so uh, the bank of japan maintained its key short-term interest rate at negative 0.1 and that for and that for the 10 year bond yield at, at around 0% during its July meeting so by an 8 to 1 vote but they cut 
its 2022 GDP growth forecast to 2.4% from 2.9% made in April, citing a slowdown in overseas economies and persistent supply chain uh, issues due to prolonged war in Ukraine, right? Uh, and then they continued for the financial year 2023 and 2024. However, the committee revised slightly higher its GDP outlook to 2% from an earlier projection of 1.9% and to 1.3% from 1.1%, that is with regards to 2024. In a quarterly outlook report, the board raised its 2022 inflation forecast to 2.3% from 1.9% amid surging prices of energy, food, and durable goods. Already, inflation in, in, the, in, the, in the Japanese uh, economy is, is, is above 2.3%. So uh, the BOJ, which is the Bank of Japan, reiterated that it will not hesitate to take extra easing measures if needed. Extra easing, easing measures, we just read that. So what are they trying to do? Increase what? Increase supply in the sense of that they're doing what? They are buying bonds, right? Uh, so that is what is meant by extra easing measures if needed, a sign that it will remain an outlier among a global wave of central banks tightening policy. Every other central bank is hiking interest rates, they are not. The central bank also mentioned that it will continue to buy unlimited amounts of the bonds to defend an implicit 0.25% cap every market day as it has been doing since April. So what does this last statement mean? That they will continue buying bond to defend an implicit 0.25% cap. So if we go into trading economics, we do have a what? We do have a uh, the 10-year uh, Japanese government bond or the 10-year yield, right? Uh, it has a ceiling, that is the cap, it has a ceiling at 0.25%, right? As you can see, Around March, once it got to 0.25, around 0.25%, they it, it, it sold off, right? So they started buying more bonds. Because remember, bonds and yields go in opposite direction. If they start buying bonds, then yields are pressured lower. So this is the yield, the 10-year yield, right? So that is why they're buying unlimited government bonds to maintain this ceiling at 0.25, right? And you can see it pushed slightly above 0.25% in June, on the 14th of June, and after that, it has been selling off, and it has now pushed back up to the very same level. It's around 2.5% today. So now it's a decision moment, or, or it, 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 we add a decision point for the for the Bank of Japan. If we do see another sell-off, then that means that they're still maintaining the same position, the same outlook. But if we start seeing a push higher, that means that they are no longer what? They are no longer defending this level and maybe they are now looking to change their monetary policy from buying bonds to maybe now looking to sell bonds and eventually, hopefully, hike interest rates, right? And that should actually do what? That should actually strengthen their currency or the Japanese yen. So this is why the Japanese yen has been doing it, has been the weakest, right? Because of what? Because of the central bank's position or stance, right? In terms of monetary policy. Then we can read all the other monetary policy central banks. Uh, we can read that uh, interest rate. We can read that the Fed, the Fed, of course, they've been hiking interest rates. So this is the most recent statement. Uh, in interest rates will need to rise further and remain there for some time to provide confidence that inflation is moving down towards the central bank's 2% target. One thing I need you to also understand is that as I'm reading these statements, they are mostly talking about what? What we understood in the IMF. Uh, in the IMF article or document that they are responsible for what? For price stability, which is low and moderate inflation, right? As well as stable growth. And that is what these, all these statements are talking about, inflation and growth. And that is, that is, the, those are clues, right? So, uh, so they will continue uh, to provide confidence that inflation is moving down towards the central bank's 2% target. Fed Vice Chair uh, Leo Brainard said on Wednesday, she added that at some point the tightening cycle, the risks of going too far would become more obvious. The Fed raised their target range for the Fed funds rate by 75 basis point to 2.25% uh, during its July 2022 meeting, the fourth consecutive rate hike and pushing borrowing costs to the highest level since 2019. Fed funds futures implied investors were pricing in a more than 81% chance of another supersized 75 basis point interest rate hike in September, right? So they're still going to 
hike interest rates in September. So we can see, reading the statement from the Bank of Japan and reading the statement of the Fed, we can see that they both coming from what? From the same common point. Now we're going back to divergence, but they're going in opposite directions. One is buying bonds and making sure that the yields do not go above 0.25%. On the other hand, one is what? They're actually selling bonds. The, the Fed is actually also doing quantitative tightening or the selling of bonds to reduce supply of money. On the other hand, the BOJ is doing the opposite of that, right? And they're hiking interest rates. The BOJ is not hiking interest rates, right? So that is where we're now getting a divergence from a common point, moving in opposite direction. And that builds a, a, a lethal, a lethal trade idea, right? So we can read, we can read Bank of Canada, it's a same story. Bank of England, it's the same story, which is why now if we go into a price chart and we're looking at the Japanese economy, you understand JPY is weak based on what the central bank is doing. Uh, and now that we have that understanding, if we go into a chart, we understand that, okay, we should be looking to buy or to sell the Japanese yen and we should be looking to buy all the other economies that are going in the opposite direction, right? Remember, divergence is the key here. But what is most important is for you to understand the law or the principles that govern central banks because like every other law in the universe, whether you like it or not, it will actually come to pass at some time or it will become a reality. And like I said, it may not happen today, tomorrow, this week, this month, but it will be true at some point, right? So, which is why now it becomes a no-brainer, and that is the reason why I always say it's zero guesswork, or we eliminate the guesswork because, because it becomes a no-brainer because we are focusing on people who are responsible for the economy. So we are focusing on what they are doing and what they are saying. We are not smarter than them. It is their duty, their obligation, their mandate to do what to maintain price stability uh, in terms of um, stable growth, low inflation, right? And to also what manage uh, economic fluctuations, right? So why not pay attention to these guys? And that is the most simplest way to start what? To start making money from from trading, right? Once you start understanding, of course, and being able to impl implement how they operate, right? So now if you look at the Japanese yen pairs, it becomes a no-brainer for you to just buy, which is why it has been a one-sided move. And all you have to do at this point is just be patient and wait for pullbacks in price and then look to buy, right? All the Japanese yen economies, uh, or, or, or sorry, all the currencies that are that are stronger in terms of central banks, or there is a divergence uh, between the central banks against the Japanese yen, which is why Japanese yen has been the weakest. Which is why I've been holding USD JPY since last year, twenty twenty one, and it has only been because of fundamentals, right? Most predominantly because of the divergence between central banks. So, if there's one thing you can take away here is to understand that. Everything is governed by laws, even in fundamentals, which is why fundamentals do work. There is no, there is literally not much guesswork like like you'd have with technicals alone. Here, you know, you understand the people, you understand the gatekeepers. That is what we can also call central banks, the gatekeepers, uh, who who are who who it is their duty to maintain price stability and low inflation. So at some point governed by law, they will need to act, right, to make sure that their objectives, which is to maintain price stability and low inflation, are met, right? So at whatever cost, they need to step in at some point. Like I said, it might not happen today, tomorrow, this week, next month, but at some point it will eventually happen, right? So like the euro, the ECB, they took some time uh, but they eventually stepped in in July and they've started hiking interest rates. Most recently, last week, they hiked by 0.75%. So as you can see, it took years, months for them to actually step in and do what they are mandated to do as a central bank. So this is why I say it is law, it is a law, and it will at some point become a reality or the law will at some point become true, right? So that is what I need you to take away from this focus on the fundamentals, understand the law, and most importantly, focus on central banks. If you really want to start making money from Forex, uh, focus on central banks. And like I said, it's for educational purposes. I'm not really trying to give any financial advice, but keep in mind what I just said about the 
Japanese government bond 10-year yield. Now that they are at the 0.25%, we need to see their reaction there. And that will also be telling us something. But it's for educational purposes. And like I had promised, this is how I've been able to make money from Forex. This is how I've been able to catch big moves from Forex, right? As you can see, I haven't even touched at, at uh, touched in terms of technicals but i've just given you a framework based on what based on laws that actually uh um, govern what happens uh, or how specific components or certain components of the foreign exchange market actually operate right specifically the central banks who are the gatekeepers in my in my honest opinion right so i hope this has been helpful i hope this has given you value and actually giving you an insight into how you can actually start making money from forex using fundamentals uh, and then when it comes to technicals it becomes easier as you can see the last part or well, the last component was me to actually come in coming onto a technical chart to actually show you guys that what the fundamentals have been telling us what the central banks are doing is actually what is happening on the chart and from this point onwards it becomes a no-brainer to sell the Japanese. And once you have an understanding, a clear understanding of what the central banks are doing, what they are looking to achieve and why they are doing it, right? So like I said, laws govern everything. So you need to have a clear and crystal understanding of that, right? So I hope this uh, short educational video training was uh, informative for you. And it has given you a different perspective in terms of how to actually look at the market so you can easily profit, right? Easily profit. By easily profit, I mean that you don't necessarily have to break a sweat because remember, it's everything we, we, we're basing it off of the fact that there are certain principles that have been put in place to ensure that certain things come to fruition, right? So that is why I that is what I mean when I say you can easily make money because you're just trusting in the principles and you just keeping keep on following that and keeping yourself up to date with that. And then when you get to a technical chart, you're just waiting for pullbacks. You can use your favorite uh, strategy, whether it's a trend line, whether it's a pattern, whether this is a flag pattern, whether it's a an inverse head and shoulders and break, whatever strategy technical you wanna use. But you need to start from what from the central banks people who are actually responsible for the economy that you are trying or the economies when it comes to currency pairs that you are trying to trade right so have yourself a very beautiful day and i hope like i said this video training has served you and if you really want to learn more you can also follow me on instagram at uh, effortless uh, fx trading academy uh, where i also share more insights in terms of uh, fundamental analysis and i go more in depth of course as you have seen that i do have a spreadsheet uh so i go more in depth in terms of uh based on the spreadsheet based on the different uh, fundamental drivers but like i said the starting point is understanding what the central banks are doing what they are saying and what they are focusing on because they are the gatekeepers right and they are obligated by law or principles to actually act or step in at a certain point when the conditions are no longer desirable right so cheers